All right, everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress, and welcome to today's webinar, What's New in VCL version 14.2, presented by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell. In this webinar, see new controls and features provided in the second major release of the year in the DevExpress VCL suite. Among many improvements, Julian will cover the new gauges, the CTP of the brand new rich text editor, and the new features for the grid and the spreadsheet. Thank you for joining us. I will now hand things over to Julian. Well, hello, everybody. Um, this is Julian Bucknell. I'm, as Amanda said, the CTO for DevExpress. And those of you who may know me of old uh, will know that I used to be a Delphi head. Um, don't do it so much these days, but uh, still. So what's new in VCL 14.2? And he says, moving quickly along. So, overview. First of all, uh, we finally released our gauge control. Last time in 14.1, it was in beta. Uh, we now release the gauge control. Uh, to remind you, this is um, essentially a set, a set of gauges, uh, whether they're circular, linear, or digital. Uh, to help you convey some kind of information to your users at a glance. And um, obviously, for things like dashboards and um, applications like that, it's, it's a way of immediately showing uh, your user some valid piece of information. We have a new camera control. This one was quite a funny one. About two months ago, um, a customer basically said, hey, I really want a camera control. So we looked at it and we thought, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so direct feedback does influence what we do. I want to make that very clear. Uh, the camera control um, is a fun control. Uh, obviously, uh, it's for those kind of applications where you have your users taking photographs anyway and then having to somehow import them into your application for you know entering into the database or whatever it happens to be. The camera control removes the need for an external camera. You can just use the webcam on your laptop or maybe the, the front or rear facing camera on a Windows tablet and so on and so forth. A rich edit control, as uh, Amanda said, uh, this is a community technology preview. It is limited at the moment. Uh, with regard to uh, how you can compile it and how you can use it, uh, but it has a pretty full uh, set of features already, um, and there's a lot to actually add to it over the next uh, six to nine months. Grid, ah, we love our grid. The very first control we ever produced for Delphi here at DevExpress uh, now comes with a find panel. Uh, the find panel is this, I don't know, I, I just find it an amazing um, uh, bit of UI to help your users easily, and I mean it's easy, you'll, you'll be seeing what I, what I mean in a moment, but it's very easy, very straightforward way for uh, your end users to basically locate some information inside um, the records of the grid. It's, um, it's like Google for the grid, if you like. Map control, we've enhanced that with uh, route planning uh, by using the Bing's Maps provider, and uh, we've added shapefile support as well. I'll be showing you that in a moment. Spreadsheet control, um, we've now persisting your print settings. So, you know, your end user basically declares some kind of range that he wants printed, saves it to an XLS file. The next time that user opens the XLS file, the print settings are exactly the same. So he doesn't have to rearrange um, you know, the range to print and, and so on and so forth. We've added array formulas uh, to the spreadsheet as well. So you know, whereas before you could only have, say, one range or one cell in a particular formula, we can now in incorporate a whole array. So if you're doing like a, a sum of a group of ranges, we can do that now. Layout control, kind of interesting. We're now including floating groups. Uh, this will enable you know, some kind of docking scenario inside your application. Uh, layout control, if you remember, uh, what this does is it takes away the need for you to properly lay out your forms. We'll do it for you as part of the layout control. Um, icon library, uh, like with all our 
.NET products, we're now supplying a complete library of icons. We now have some 2,000 icons in this library. And uh, please do check it out if you need icons for, you know, menus, ribbons, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've probably got the right one for you. So, <clears throat> let's uh, let's uh, find my mouse. There we go. So, a reminder now. Um, the new controls we've added in 2014 of a RAV Studio 2010 or later. They are not for Delphi 7 and they are not for Delphi 2007. So uh, the gauge control that I just mentioned, the camera control and the rich text edit, uh, they will not be uh, available for Delphi 7 or 2007. In fact, the rich edit is even um, even more restricted at the moment, it is a CTP. Uh, it's 32-bit Delphi XE or later only. Uh, we don't support C++ Builder yet. Uh, we tried to get uh, the required APIs working but didn't. Um, so that's going to come later on in the year. Um, 64-bit will come later on in the year. But for the moment, uh, for you to try it out, um, the 32-bit Delphi XE or later only. So, without further ado, let's see some 14.2 in action. And I'm going to kick off with the, you know, the funnest um, demo that we have. This is breaking new ground. I, I would, you know, we haven't actually done anything like this in a, um, a webinar before. So, here I am. Hello, everybody. This is our VCL camera control. And the sun is shining through the window at the moment, so yes, it's really nice here in Colorado. And uh, here we are. It's, it's a control. It's, um, you know, basically we just added the control to a normal window, dropped it on the form, and uh, we've added a, a button here on the side. And uh, where are we? Where's my mouse gone? Oh, there it is. And I can capture the image. So if I make a funny face, there we go. Uh, just simple. It really is. I mean, it's very easy to, to use. Um, the, the default, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The default uh, properties are properly set. Uh, on this particular laptop, for example, I actually have two uh, cameras. I have this, this camera we're using at the moment, which is a Logitech something or other. And um, I also have the embedded. Um, Webcam. So let me click on here. Uh, so I just basically right-clicked on the uh, um, uh, the window. Uh, let's go to the integrated webcam, which is over to my left, over there. And uh, it's my webcam on this particular uh, PC is pretty horrible. It's uh, not very high resolution at all. Uh, the other one is a, a Bluetooth driver for a, a webcam, but I don't have anything attached to that. So let's go back to my Logitech, and here we are. So just for fun, I'm just going to keep this running down here in the corner while we go through all of the other items we have. So the next one I want to show you is to go through uh, some of the gauges that we have, and uh, here we are. Um, so. As I said before, um, this was as a beta in uh, version 14.1. We've now enhanced it and um, you know fixed the various bugs that we had and all that kind of stuff. So we now have a full set of gauges and styles for uh, your applications in some kind, one assumes, some kind of dashboard type um, application or some kind of dashboard type window. So circular gauges, um, half circular gauges, so you can, you know, pack more in if you like, quarter circles. Linear gauges are things like, uh, you know, kind of thermometer type things. Um, digital gauges, we have both uh, 7 and 14 segment uh, type gauges. So uh, the white one here is a normal 7 type, uh, 7 segment type gauge. And over here on the, the left are the 14 
uh, segment type gauges to get more, if you like, definition out of them. Hybrid gauges, you can actually um, mer not merge them, but um, use them alongside each other to create some kind of uh, dashboard uh, type effect. Um, so here we have, you know, the digital gauges on the the, uh, the right hand side, um, the you know, kind of half semicircular gauge on the left, and then the circular gauge in the middle. Well, lots of circular gauges in the middle actually. We're you know we're really going bananas on this particular case. Um, again, another hybrid type example uh, where we have a digital uh, gauge inside a half circle and a linear gauge and some other simple type gauges you can create with the VCL gauge control. Let's just quickly show you the, uh, the styles that we have and um, so each of the gauges, each of the types of gauges um, comes with a certain set of styles which you can see on the right hand side here. I'm currently showing ice cold zone uh, but uh, there's a retro which I particularly like because I like the needle, um, the sport car, uh, nice red on white, uh, pure white um, kind of look and feel, very um, um, stark if you like, disco if you really, 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 really want to go that far, and so on and so forth. We have a whole bunch of styles as you can see on the, uh, the right side, well over a dozen styles, uh, so you can style those um, those gauges according to you know, your particular application and how you want that particular window to look. So I can mostly drag this progress bar here and slider here I should say. Um, the oops the um, styles also uh, sorry, the uh, the gauges also allow you to do something like this, for example. So we're showing clocks, which are circular gauges in essence, uh, with a couple of needles, well, three needles on each. So we're showing time in Washington, Paris, and Moscow, and the time here in Colorado, um, or if I were in um, California, for example, that would be California time. That's a digital uh, gauge. Well, that's normal. Okay. Let's move on now to the uh, map control. Map control is, as I said, adds route planning. So here we are. This is Glendale in California, where uh, our well, the Dev Express offices are. Uh, Dev Express offices are here on North Brand. So whenever I go to the office, there's always the Friday afternoon where I have to go from the office. I'll set my start point. And I kind of persuade somebody in the office to drive me over to Burbank Airport, or Bob Hope Airport, as it's called. So here's my endpoint. And so which rate, which route should they go? And it's this particular route. Let me just uh, make it a little easier to see. So what we're doing here is we're basically passing the uh, start and endpoints over to Bing Maps. Um, Bing Maps is providing the or calculating the route, the best route to go uh, for my particular trip every Friday afternoon when I'm in the office uh, to go back to the airport so I can come back to, to Colorado. Simple enough, um, very useful uh, if you have that kind of application where um, maybe you have um, you know, salespeople going out and you need them to be able to um, you know, find the best route uh, to travel to go and see customers and all that kind of stuff. Shapefile support, uh, pretty simple as well. Uh, Shapefile is a standard file format and uh, what we're doing here is, in this particular demo, is showing you know a map of the world. It's actually a shape map uh, that we can drill into and see various countries. Not only that, but we um, activate, if you like, each of the shapes so that um, you can display some extra information. At the moment we're showing um, uh, the GDP for each country as I hover over it. Um, but we can say, yeah, let's have a look at populations here. So Ukraine is 46 million, Spain 41 million, let's jump over to the United States, 307 million. So 
the shapefile support is great for those kind of situations where you've got data in yet again another dashboard type um, situation and you want to display the data in a more visual form than say just you know throwing it into a grid um, shape files are available all over the place so if you want say the uh, the states in the USA um, there's a shape file uh, for that uh, for each of those states at the moment we're just showing countries here so those are the new features of the map demo uh, the map control I should say um, finally, uh, no, not finally. The fun one. I, I really like this. Um, this is this is brilliant. Um, this is a way. Uh, the new find panel is a way for your end users to quickly locate data inside your grid. Essentially, here's the find panel, and I'm going to basically look for. Okay, it's a list of cars and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to look for uh, Mercedes. So I just start typing Mercedes and the grid updates itself with just those records and not only that but it highlights where it's finding those um, those letters um, so pretty 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 snazzy I must admit let's go back to the uh, the full thing here now if I if I type something like um, I was looking for Mercedes but also paid for with Amex the, oh, there isn't any, because no Mercedes owners use Amex. What? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't understand. That should, oh, right. The, let's add some extended syntax here. So, and, yeah. So, let's search for EX to begin with. And we're going to get uh, not only the payment type here being matched, uh, we also have Lexus. But it's not showing us those records which have, if you like, both. So if I was looking for Lexus and Amex, so let's do that. Lexus, we find all those. And Amex, we find all those. But notice what's happened. It's actually done a kind of either or here at this particular point in time. With a space, with extended syntax, it does an or operation. It's either looking for Lexus or it's looking for Amex. So what if I wanted just those records which were Lexus and used a payment type of Amex? I basically add an operator, and the, the operators are very simple. So Lexus plus Amex, using the extended syntax, just shows me those records with both Lexus and Amex. Now, say I'm, I'm not really interested in the GSs in here, so let's take those out. So we just type in minus GS. And now we just have all those Lexus's records paid for with Amex, but not the GS, whatever the, how the GS was. So extended syntax or and the fine panel itself, excellent um, way for your end users to you know, basically analyze the data in the grid and find records very quickly. Finally, uh, let's have a quick look at the, um, the rich text edit. What this does is at the moment, um, it gives you a way to create a, a word processor type um, function to create word processor type functionality inside your application. Uh, we support opening and saving RTF files at the moment. Uh, obviously, we'll be adding uh, things like doc and docx later on. Uh, but already we have um, the standard look and feel of a, a word processor type window. Um, we have a ribbon. Um, it's our express ribbon obviously uh, there's a there are ways of uh, creating character formatting so italic bold changing the fonts and the colors and all that kind of stuff paragraph formatting uh, we have the standard paragraph formatting uh, left aligned centered right aligned justified and um, all the rest of it with indents and so on and so forth um, obviously the ribbon is set up 
uh, in this particular demo so that you can um, set these um, format types uh, very quickly uh, using the ribbon. But it's, um, you know, let's create a new document here. And hello, BCR customers. Oops. It's very easy. Um, let's make that really big because we love you. There we go. And so on and so forth. But as I said earlier on, we, we have things like uh, uh, cut and paste, copy paste. So let's cut that and paste it back. Um, works works well. Um, as I said, this is a CTP. Uh, only works at the moment with 32-bit uh, Delphi XE or above. Um, but um, do please take a look at it and uh, play around with it. We'll be adding, um, you know, further compiler support later on in the year, and uh, also the ability uh, to do other things with your documents. The I can't really show you here, but there is um, a full API here where the actual control here is interacting with the ribbon, but we can actually replace the ribbon with something else. We have, um, we've defined, if you like, the API in terms of actions on text and providing you map up those action objects with your UI um, say with this ribbon, for example, you can then do things like character formatting and paragraph formatting and all the other great things that you normally do within a um, within a document. So that was the. No, I don't want to save that. So that's fourteen point two in action. Um, going back to the slide deck now, so you'll see me disappear. As a cool fact. Um, there are actually more lines of code already in the rich, rich edit control than in the Express Quantum Grid, our big, big control for VCL. That's uh, kind of fascinating to me, I must admit. Anyway, let's have a quick look into the crystal ball um, you know, for 2015. I've just shown you what we've done for 14.2. First of all, I've been saying this for a while now. And uh, we are essentially not going to be supporting Delphi 7 and 2007 going forward. 14.2 is the last VCL version that will support Delphi 7 and 2007. We've been saying this for a long time, well over a year. And um, I, I put this down here, seriously upgrade to Rad Studio XE, whatever, for new development. Um, I know Embarcadero have a... Um, a kind of end of year sale on at the moment uh, where they're trying to uh, cut prices so you actually upgrade. Um, but I'm just warning you, 15.1 um, will not have support for Delphi 7 or 2007. Delphi 7 actually came out on the 9th of August 2002, which is hey, a long time ago, 13 years ago. Even in .NET we only support Visual Studio 2010 onwards. Anyway. So that's, that's the first thing. Got to warn you, 15.1 um, will not have Delphi 7 2007 support. FireMonkey, it's not in our plans for 15.1. I uh, want to make that very clear. Um, obviously, uh, if Embarcadero do the same thing they be, they've been doing with the Rad Studio over the past couple of years, there'll probably be an XC8 in April and an XC9 in September. Obviously, we will be supporting those with whatever VCL um, uh, new features they have and all that kind of stuff. But at the moment, uh, we are not planning to do any FireMonkey uh, development uh, for 15.1. So, some quick hints on what you might expect. Obviously, the rich edit control has to be completed. There'll be, you know, other things that we'll do normally, you know, improving the spreadsheet, improving the grid, improving uh, all the other controls and all that. But let's take a little kind of quick hint from our uh, DevExpress WinForms product. So if you keep an eye on DevExpress WinForms, it's likely that we'll be, you know, porting or converting 
some of their controls over to VCL, like for the spreadsheet, for example, data grouping and data filtering, new things that appeared in 14.2 on WinForms. Well, do you want those in your spreadsheet, in the VCL spreadsheet? Let us know. Give us feedback. I uh, said earlier on, the camera control is only there because somebody actually said to us, you know, I really, really, really like the camera control, and this is my scenario for having it. The ribbon control, we just added the new office for iOS view. Would you like that for VCL as well? Very modern looking. Um, essentially, it's the, the look of office for the iPad, um, but in VCL. Grid. Hey, do you like the new tile layout we have for WinForms? Want that for VCL? Let us know. PDF control. I don't know whether uh, you have any need for a PDF control inside your, your applications. Maybe you're using one of our competitors' PDF control. Maybe. Let us know. Um, have a look at what we've been doing for WinForms. Um, tends to be easier for us to convert from WinForms to VCL than, say, from WPF to the VCL. So just let us know. Any questions? What have we got, Amanda? Hey, Julian. <laughs> um, well, some questions have been answered by the team. Uh, Mike just asked, how about charting controls? Charting controls, that's, that's an interesting one, because with VCL, we went a different route. Um, the charts in VCL are actually bound to the grid. It's actually, you know, if you like, a different view of the grid. Um, so we have, if you like, um, almost painted ourselves into a corner there. Um, I think we have to um, break out the charts from the grid. Um, I don't know whether that's an easy proposition, a very hard proposition. Uh, I'd have to have a chat with the team and whether we could actually create a, um, you know, a charting package for VCL which didn't rely on the grid. Um, great comment, and um, yeah, it uh, kind of makes sense, and uh, we'll we'll see. I, I'll have to have a chat with the team, as I said. Uh, from Juan, uh, do the controls work with a Windows 8.1 tablet using touch? Yes. All right, from Mike, uh, just a suggestion, a funnel control would be awesome. Thanks. Oh, okay. Um, but again, that you know boils down to, yeah, we've got to split off the charts from the grid and create a separate charting um, package as part of the VCL subscription. Um, so, yep, yeah, um, agreed. And then just several comments regarding the PDF control. Uh, yes, for the PDF control. Um, then from Eric, I do lots of creating PDFs and converting PDFs to text, but I don't need to edit them. You already have some export to PDF function in some of your right. controls, which is awesome. Yeah, understood. This is this is more about um, you know, when I say PDF control, it's more about you know, having a PDF and displaying it within your application. Um, briefly, let's see if I can quickly grab if you've got another question. Let's see if I can show you the the WinForms version, which I probably have somewhere on here. Um, Oops. Any other thing? Any questions while I, while I find my... Sure. Uh, how long do you expect to support Delphi 2010 from Terry? Right. Well, that's a... Damn it, Janet. <laughs> I can't seem to type in my find box here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um... Ah, there we go. Demo Center. Um... Good question. Notice that the rich edit is XC or above. Um, we have no uh, firm plans at the moment to um, drop support for Rad Studio 2010. Um, I will point out, um, I can't remember how long ago this was, like five years ago, I did say something along the lines of, you know, support supporting all these compilers actually takes quite a bit of work. Um, with the XE series, we're currently at seven compilers, 32-bit and 64-bit, Delphi and C++ Builder. 
So what's that? Uh, 28 different compilers, just with the XE series. Um, now, you know, the, basically the code doesn't change all that much, so it's not too bad. 2010, I'm trying to remember, did have generics, um, which is something that obviously we want to start um, using um, in our own code. Um, we're still doing things very much old style, if you like. Um, so uh, certainly for 2015, I, we haven't got any plans to drop support for two, uh, Delphi 2010 or C++ build of 2010. Um, 2016, I don't know. Um, in theory, we'll have two new uh, RAV studios by then. Uh, XE8 and XE9, in theory, unless Embarcadero change completely the way they're going to be uh, pro uh, producing uh, new versions. Um, so I'd have to say, if you can move up, move up. You're okay for now. Oh, by the way, this is the WinForms um, PDF viewer uh, showing um, um, some PDF here. So there's um, you know, the ability to scroll through, there's the ability to highlight, um, I guess to zoom in and zoom out. We have support for, you know, things like images within the PDF, and so on and so on and so on. So in theory, this is one of the controls that we could port over to uh, VCL, um, a PDF viewer. Yes, we do have support for creating PDFs, but this will be just essentially a way of showing PDFs within your application. Okay, next. I seem to be rabbiting on, but go on. Amanda? Sorry, Julian, I was uh, I didn't unmute myself. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, are you thinking that FireMonkey isn't mature enough today to develop for? Um, what we do is essentially every major version of Frat Studio, we have another look at FireMonkey. Um, we have a, a suite of little demo apps um, with some rudimentary controls on that we've created, and we, we play around with things like the speed, we look at the API, how's that changed? Um, we, we run it on uh, Windows or, or the Mac. Now, phew, then we get to this, this, this whole thing. To me, there are two fire monkeys, okay? There's the desktop fire monkey, and then there's the mobile fire monkey. Uh, for mobile, said this before, say it again, we are going different uh, routes for uh, mobile support. We have a product called DevExtreme, which is our HTML5 JavaScript um, framework for creating mobile apps on iOS or Android or Windows Phone or even BlackBerry. I think we have support for BlackBerry and Tizen, which never seems to be released, and so on and so forth. So we have that kind of support in a product. And we're also um, doing work with Xamarin. We're going to be um, uh, releasing our data grid for Xamarin pretty soon now, um, which is our first control for um, Xamarin. Um, you, you've got to realize that most of our, our customers are uh, essentially .NET C Sharp customers, and so we have to target those uh, more than um, you know, other types of customers, shall we say. So for our mobile strategy, that's our mobile strategy. So I can't see us doing Fire Monkey Mobile, um, you know, over the next year, two years, or whatever it happens to be. Uh, now, desktop Fire Monkey, if you might call it that, um, that's still a you know possibility. Um, as I say, we keep looking at every major version. Um, how much effort is it going to take to uh, convert the big control? the grid uh, with all of its editors uh, to FireMonkey and it's still a lot of work and we still have to create a lot of um, you know, functionality that's, the, uh, that's not there in FireMonkey but is there in VCL and so on and so forth. So I, I don't want to say never but you know, 
assume it's never at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Julian, that is all of the questions. Cool. Well, um, thank you very much. And um, really good control this. Um, <laughs> I know. I love that we can see you. It makes it so much more. I know. I know. Kind of scary. Notice <laughs> the door in the background is shut so the cats don't come in. <laughs> They're meowing outside. I can just about hear them. But oh, anyway, yeah. over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Julian. All right, everybody. Uh, the website has been updated for what's new in 14.2 and version 14.2 has been released and publish so you can download it wow from your account now and that is it for this one thank you so much to Julian and the VCL team thank you all for joining us and of course thank you for choosing DevExpress bye bye everybody <laughs>